الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان سيدنا ونبينا ومأوانا وملجأنا محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى اله واصحابه وبارك وسلم ابدا ما بعد فاعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هل ينظرون الا ان تاتي ان تاتيهم الملائكه او ياتي ربك او ياتي بعد ايات ربك يوم ياتي بعد بعد ايات ربك لا ينفع نفسا ايمانها لم تكن امنت من قبل او كسبت في ايمانها خيرا قل انتظروا انا منتظرون امنت بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم ان الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا ايها الذين امنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى ال سيدنا مولانا محمد واصحاب سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وصل عليه صلاه وسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى اليك واصحابك يا سيدي يا حبيب الله صلاه وسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى اليك واصحابك يا سيدي يا نبي الله صلاه وسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله وعلى اليك واصحابك يا سيدي يا رحمه للعالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم after praising allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salutations peace and blessings upon the best of creation the crown of creation the jewel of creation the beloved of allah almighty the coolness to our eyes the purpose of our lives the reviver of our hearts the inspirer to our minds the awakener of our souls the most honored one the most praised one the most revered one undoubtedly the most beautiful one none other than sayyiduna wa nabiyyuna muhammadur rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa barik wa sallam we are currently living in testing times we are living in difficult and hard times and day by day it is becoming more and more difficult for muslims to practice their deen and religion in the current world that we are living in and the prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam in a number of ahadith informed us about the tests and tribulations the difficulties that his ummah will go through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa informed us about this before they left this world. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa informed us about everything that shall happen until the day of judgment. And this is all within the knowledge of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that was bestowed and granted them to them by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa from Allah Almighty 
نبی علیہ السلات والسلام انفرم دے صحابہ about the signs about the events about what will happen all the way until the day of judgment نبی علیہ السلات والسلام انفرم دے about the signs of the day of judgment the major signs and the minor signs and from amongst the minor signs Rasulullah alayhi salatu was salam said that towards the end of time fitans tests will increase tribulations will increase alcohol will be on the increase adultery and fornication will be on the increase men will begin to wear gold and silk a man will respect his wife more than he will respect his own mother Nabi alayhi salatu was salam informed us towards the end of time there will be big masajid but nobody will be inside them. Nabi alayhi salam informed us that towards the end of time before the final hour signs such as a man will be respected out of fear of him. People will respect others because they are scared of them. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam informed us that Towards the end of time, men will dress like women and women will dress like men. Towards the end of time, signs will appear where a man who is renowned for lying will be deemed as truthful and the one who speaks the truth will be deemed as a liar. Ignorant individuals will become leaders of nations. Nabi Salaam said towards the end of time practicing Islam will become so difficult that a Muslim brother will pass by his brother's grave and will say, Oh Allah, I wish I was in his place at this moment in time. Towards the end of time, the ratio of man to woman will be 50 women to one man. That there will be more women than men. Towards the end of time, Nabi Ali Salaatu Salaam informed the signs such as the fear of Allah Almighty will leave the hearts of the people. Towards the end of time, Rasulullah informed us of signs such as a person, it will be so difficult for him, a Muslim, to practice Islam, just as difficult it is for an individual to hold hot coal in his hand. Imagine holding something very hot in your hand, what will you do? You will let it go so that you don't burn. What will a man do? A man will let his iman and deen go because it will be so difficult for him to practice Islam. Towards the end of time, these signs will appear. And Rasulullah told us about these signs. And it is sad to say that we are living in that time now. We are living in the time where fitnas are increasing, where alcohol is being sold by Muslims. Muslims own off licenses. We are living in a time where men are wearing gold, especially on their wedding day. How many guys would you find on the day of their wedding will put gold on? Rasulullah said that gold and silk is haram for a man. Why? Because it is halal for him in the akhirah. Do not make what is haram in this dunya halal. And do not make what is haram in this dunya and halal in the akhirah halal for yourselves. For you'll be deprived of this in the akhirah. In the akhirah there are no laws. There is no sharia that will govern. Those who are in Jannah are in Jannah. Those who are in the fire of Jahannam are in the fire of Jahannam. There alcohol will be drunk by those who are in Jannah al Firdaus. Here it doesn't mean that they'll be getting high. No, this doesn't mean they'll be going on some binge drinking nights. No, none of that. Here what it means is sharab al tuhur The pure drink of Jannah al firdaus will be supplied to them. And Allah Almighty will please them through this. But in this dunya, it is made haram for us. Sad that towards the end of time, our brothers and sisters, unfortunately, are going to nightclubs and drinking going to nightclubs and dancing. They are going in the wrong direction. And these are the fitnas and the tests of the time that we are living in. 
Islam will become so difficult for Muslims to practice that Iman will eventually leave their hearts. And there will only be a few that will remain who will be strong on their Iman. And when it will become so testing and difficult, what will end up happening, a time will come that it will become so difficult, so hard for Muslims to practice that the ones who have Iman, they will want to be living in secret. They wouldn't want to live in the dunya that they, were living, they are living in. And when all the minor signs have come, then the major signs will begin. And Rasulullah told us what the major signs are. Nabi said that Imam Mahdi will appear. Then the Dajjal will arrive. And Sayyidina Isa salam will descend from the heavens. And then Ya'juj and Ma'juj will come. And the sun will rise from the west to the east. Whereas normally it rises from the east to the west. But it will rise from the west till the east, from Maghrib till Mashrib. Tulu'u shamsi min al-Maghrib, or min Maghribiha. That the sun will rise from the west to the east. And major signs such as Dabatul Ard, the beast of the earth which Allah talks about in the Quran, that will have the ring of Suleiman alayhi salam, and will have the asa and staff of Musa alayhi salam. And he will mark the foreheads of the believers and mark the foreheads of the non-believers. And then the dukhan, the smoke will come, which will, the entire world will be filled with smoke. And then the major earthquakes will occur, one in the east, one in the west, and one in the Middle East. And then Allah Almighty will give command after the major signs have appeared, when there will remain not a single person on this dunya who will say la ilaha illallah not an individual who will do the zikr of allah almighty it is then that allah will command the angel now blow the trumpet let the final hour end and now let the day let the entire cosmopolitan the universe everything the cosmos the entire system let it all be destroyed after 40 years after 40 years of the first trumpet being blown, the first time the trumpet will be blown, 40 years after the angel will be commanded to blow the trumpet for a second time. And then everyone shall rise from their graves. And they will stand on the Ardul Mahshar, on the lands of Mahshar, the plains where you will be questioned, where we will be reckoned. And for 50,000 years, we will be running around wanting the day of Qiyamah to begin. And eventually, for those who believe, it will be like two units, four units of prayer. For those who don't believe, it will be like 50,000 years that day. For those who are sinners, it will be like 50,000 years. The sun will be a mile, a mile and a half above their heads. They will be naked in such a state that they will not know what is around them. They will be running around in a frenzy, blind, lost. And then they will come to a point where one by one they will go to each and every prophet and they will ask intercede 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 for the entire creation so that the day of judgment may begin it is too difficult for us to bear the heat of the day of qiyamah too difficult for us to stand here let qiyamah begin let the day of questioning begin let it begin and one by one they will go from every single prophet until they arrive at sayyid al wal akhirin Sayyidu al-Anbiya wal-Mursaleen Sayyidu al-Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam And Rasulullah alayhi salatu wa salam will say Ana laha Ana laha You know this day This is Today is the time It is for me that I may intercede And the ulama have described that this intercession is Al-Shafa'atul Uzma This is the grand intercession That every single creation of Allah Almighty will benefit from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam they will have no option but to ask the Prophet ﷺ for help on that day. They will have no option but to ask. Allahu Akbar. The day of judgment then will begin. Rasulullah will intercede for those who are in the fire of Jahannam who have 
even an atom's worth of iman, Rasulullah will intercede for them. Then people will be questioned. Then the mizan and the scales. Then the passing murur ala sirat. The passing over the pul sirat, the bridge which is, some say, through the fire of, uh, through Jahannam, others say, over Jahannam. What is guaranteed is that each and every one of us will have to walk past this. Those who have done good in their life, it will be quickly, they will pass by quickly. Those who have done bad in their life, they will stutter and struggle. They will struggle to get past. Then the weighing scales where your deeds will be weighed. You will receive the book of deeds either in your right hand, and he who receives it in his right hands will be entering into Jannatul Firdaus. O oh Allah, make us from amongst those who receive our deeds in our right hands. And not those who receive it in their left hands and behind their back. For the one who receives it in his left hand or behind his back, it is a sign that he is destined for the fire of Jahannam. Allahu Akbar. Then once the day of Qiyamah, once all matters have been settled, the wrongs that have been done have been settled, everything, then Allah Almighty will command that death be brought forward. And death will come in the form of a ram. It will come in the form of a ram and it will be slaughtered in front of everyone. And a voice will call out and say, after today nobody shall taste death. Yani everyone shall live eternally. You who are in Jannatul Firdaus will remain in Jannah. And those who are destined for the fire of Jahannam are in the fire of hell, they are in the fire of hell. And then, Khalidina fiha abada, they will remain in Jannatul Firdaus forever. And those who are in the hellfire shall remain in the hellfire forever. What's the good news? The good news is this. The one who sincerely reads La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah, sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallama. The good news is this. That maybe we might go to the fire of Jahannam. We might go to the fire of Jahannam. Be punished for our deeds. And we make dua to Allah that through the intercession of the Prophet وسلم, Allah protects us from this punishment. That we do not taste the punishment of the fire, of Jahannam, of the hellfire. But he, there will be some who have iman, who believe they will be in the fire of Jahannam and then eventually will go to Jannat al Firdaus. One guarantee Rasulullah said that I was given an option. Allah Ta'ala gave me an option whether to have one third or half of my ummah forgiven or to intercede. And Rasulullah said, I chose the option of intercession. And why? Because half the ummah is half the ummah. Rasulullah would not want any single one ummati to remain in the fire of Jahannam forever. More will go and shafa'at is awsa. Shafa'at is more greater, more encompassing than all of this. And this is why Rasulullah said, I chose intercession that I may intercede for my ummah until I take every single one of my ummatis out of the fire of Jahannam and into the gardens of Jannatul Firdaus. This intercession is something that we need to make dua for. There is nobody sitting here who can stand up. No Sufi, no Wali, nobody, nobody. Doesn't matter how much you've prayed. There is nobody who can guarantee me or I can guarantee them that they are going to the uh, highest places in the gardens of Jannat al Firdaus. There's no guarantee. We live our life hoping, praying, supplicating, wishing and thinking good that insha'Allah, Allah will send us into Jannatul Firdaus. This is what the Prophet sallallahu said to the Sahaba, that even your deeds on the day of Qiyamah, eventually it is not about your deeds. You should rely on the mercy of Allah Almighty. And they said, Ya Rasulullah, what about you? And Nabi alayhi salam said, yes. Even I rely on the mercy of Allah Almighty. And this is that individual, that great man sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wasallam, the greatest, who... Jannat will be haram upon every single individual until the Prophet ﷺ first enters into Jannat al -Firdaus. When they shall knock on the door of Jannah and Ridwan, the gatekeeper of Jannah, will be standing on the other side and say, Who is it? And he will say, I am Muhammad. 
sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I am the most praised one. And Ridwan will say, Allah Almighty prohibited me from opening this door for anyone other than you. This door will only be open for you. Allahu Akbar. Azrat, this is in a nutshell, a little briefing in the few moments that I've spoken about. From now, minor signs, touched on the major signs, right above the ocean until the day of judgment, the day of judgment, a few, a bit about that until khulud, eternity. Now let's go back to what I have been asked to speak about. The minor signs are occurring. And when the major signs will come, one of the major signs of the day of judgment will be Imam Mahdi. Imam Mahdi's arrival. Who is Sayyiduna Imam Mahdi? Imam Mahdi, his name is Muhammad, the son of Abdullah. And his laqab will be Jabir. His laqab will be Jabir. Laqab means uh, his, uh, what he will be known as. You can say his nickname. People will know him as Jabir. That will be his laqab. And his kunniya. What he will be, his, his uh, kunniya will be Abu Abdullah. And he will be from the children of Sayyidah Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha. And why will he be known as Jabir? Because he is the one who will awaken the hearts of the ummatis of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Those who are going through testing times, Sayyidina Imam Mahdi when he shall arrive, then he will open the hearts of these people. He will guide them back towards Islam. That's why he's known as Mahdi. Mahdi meaning the one who guides. Imam Mahdi is the one who guidance is with him. And Allah will give him the ability to guide people from darkness into light. Allahu Akbar. Imam Mahdi's name is Mahdi. He will have the ability to guide. If Imam Mahdi has the ability to guide, then don't you think Sayyidina Rasulullah can guide? What do you think they can't guide? If Mahdi and Ummati can guide, then what do you think is the state of our Master Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Who is the greatest of us all? Allahu Akbar. Wa huwa Adam. He is an individual who will be of white complexion. He will be of medium height. Neither too tall, neither too short. He will have a large forehead. And he will have black pupils in his eye. And he will have a mark on the right hand side. And he will have a large beard. And between his shoulders he will have the sign that the Prophet Sallallahu had. They had the sign of prophethood. But Sayyidina Imam Mahdi won't have that sign. Ya'ni of prophethood. But there will be a sign that will be like that of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then Launuhu Launu Arabi. His color will be the color of an Arab. Wa jismuhu jismuhu jismu Israeli. And his jism will be the jism, the body of an Israelite. Wa fi lisanihi lisanihi thiqal. And there will be a stutter in his speech. And when he will speak, he will hit his right hand on his left hand. And he will speak like that. And he will be the age of 40 years. A man who fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he will resemble the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his character but not in his appearance. He will resemble Rasulullah sallam in his character but not in his appearance. Sayyiduna Imam Mahdi alayhi salam is the one who, where will he come? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam informed us in one narration that Imam Mahdi will be identified in Makkah Mukarrama, whilst he is doing tawaf around the Kaaba, he will be 40 years and 
40 years he will live like this. And after 40 years what will happen? Imam Mahdi, the, he will be doing tuaf around the Kaaba and a call will come from the skies that Mahdi has arrived, Mahdi has arrived. And everyone shall identify. And those who have Iman, those will be there at that time, they will all do bay'ah, they will pledge allegiance to Sayyidina Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. Sayyidina Imam Mahdi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, spoke about them in hadith. Nabi alayhi salam, in Umm Salama radiyallahu, Umm Salama radiyallahu ta'ala anha, she said, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, Mahdi is from the children of Fatima. Yani Sayyidina Imam Mahdi is a Sayyid. Today you go on YouTube, you'll find people who will say, I am Mahdi. They'll claim to be Mahdi's. The Juhal, ignorant people who may be seeking attention. But in reality, the Mahdi will, be, will not be found on YouTube, certainly. He will be recognized whilst doing tuaf around the Kaaba. And Imam Mahdi will be a Sayyid, he will be min al-Ashraf, from the awlad of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa a descendant of Sayyidah Fatima radiyallahu ta'ala anha. Nabi alayhi salatu was salam in another narration. The first one was narrated by Abu Dawood ibn Maja. And another narration narrated by Tirmizi. Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu is the Ravi, the narrator. He said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said that the dunya will not be destroyed or the dunya shall remain until the Arabs will be ruled by a man from my family, min ahli bayti, from my household, and his name will be like my name. And the name of Imam Mahdi is what? Muhammad. That is the actual name, Muhammad. And his father's name will be Abdullah. And Rasulullah's father's name was Abdullah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Sayyidina Abdullah. So my name and his name will be the same. In another narration, Abdullah bin Mas'ud radiyallahu ta'ala anhu again narrates. And the hadith is mentioned by Tabrani in his Mu'jamul Kabir ibn Hibban in his Sahih. And Abu Dawood also narrates this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa has said, even if one day remains on this dunya, even if one day remains, Allah Almighty will prolong and extend that day so long until a man who will arrive from me, uh, yani from my children, from my household. His name will be like my name. And his father's name will be like my father's name. And he will fill the entire earth with justice. He will fill the entire earth with justice. Qistan wa adlan. Like it was filled with zulman. And it was filled with jawran. It was filled with injustice. It was filled with wrong. Imam Mahdi, this man who will come, what will he do? Even if one day remains, one day before the day of Qiyamah, Allah will make that day so long so that Mahdi arrives. And when Mahdi will arrive, that he fills the entire earth with what? With justice, with righteousness, with good, like it was filled with evil, like it was filled with injustice. Imam Mahdi will come and fill the entire earth with justice. Even if there's one day remaining, Rasulullah said, Allah will send Imam Mahdi. <coughs> In another narration, the Prophet sallallahu wasallam said, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri radiallahu an is the Ravi, narrated by Abu Dawood and Ibn Hibban. The Prophet sallallahu wasallam said, Mahdi is from me. He will have a large forehead and he will fill the entire earth with justice and righteousness like it was filled with injustice and unrighteousness and he will rule for seven years in another narration the prophet sallallahu said that the final hour will not establish until the earth that is filled with odwan and zulm darkness and injustice that world that will that will be the state of the world at that time Sayyiduna Imam Mahdi will come and he will be recognized. He will assemble an army. In one narration, Rasulullah said the greatest army to have ever been assembled will be the army of Imam Mahdi. That will be the greatest army. 
Whoever of you can join that army should join that army. Keep this in mind that from now till the time that Imam Mahdi shall arrive, Wallahu A'lam, Allah knows best. There will be a, a decline in the moral standard of humans. They will become worse in their nature. The Muslims' iman will become so weak, so weak, that the minor signs I've mentioned, such a minor sign like, it will be so difficult to practice Islam just as it's difficult to hold on to something hot. What do you do when you hold on to something hot? You let it go. What will Muslims do? They will let the iman go. When the iman will be at its lowest peak, and remember there never be a time where there aren't strong, powerful mu'minun. And Rasulullah said in every generation, every time, there are always 40. Abdal, 40 great men of Allah Almighty, through whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides to people. Because of them, Allah protects the people from punishment. Forty men of Allah Almighty will always remain. This is a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu wa sallam, Iman will become so weak that when Imam Mahdi will come and the call will come to join his army, those who have Iman around the world will join Imam Mahdi alayhi wa How that will be, Wallahu a'lam, Allah knows best. Has Imam Mahdi arrived? Allah knows best. There are individuals out there who say that Mahdi has arrived and it's only a matter of time that he comes out and makes an appearance and it becomes zahir and public and his name and his appearance manifests in front of people. It's only a matter of time. But the reality is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. That is the reality. Allah Ta'ala knows best. We can all make assumptions. We can all base it on narrations of ahadith. In some narrations, Imam Jalaluddin Suyuti Rahmatullah and other scholars, they have written great books on this. Imam Suyuti, Shawkani, other individuals. Hafiz ibn Kathir, in his book, al Nihaya Fil Fitr Wal Malahim, uh, Ali al Muttaqi al Hindi, in his book, Risala Fi Sha'n al Mahdi, Ibn al Hajr al Makki, Alihi Rahma, Al Qawl al Muhtasir, Fi Alamat al Mahdi al Muntazir, Mullah Ali Qari al Hanafi, he has a book on Imam Mahdi, the great scholar Imam Suyuti, Abu Bakr ibn Abi Haythama, all of these great ulama, Suhaili, Ibn al Khuldun, they have written books on Imam Mahdi alayhi salam. And in there they write that when will Mahdi come? Some say one of the secrets is this Bismillah Rahmani Rahim has 17 letters, 19 letters. And in the 19th century of Hijri, Imam Mahdi alayhi salam shall arrive. We are currently in what century? 13? 14? 15? 16? Make your mind up. Are we in the 14th? No. <laughs> we have entered into the 15th. We have entered into the 15th century. We've come into the 15th century of Islam now. So if you go by this opinion, that the amount of letters in Bismillah Rahman Rahim, and them being 19, the amount of letters in there, in the 19th century, Imam Mahdi and the signs will appear, then based upon this, what do we find? That there are 400 years left. And Allah knows best. Again, these are just opinions. These aren't solid stated facts. Rasulullah mentioned narrations and didn't delve too much into its, into its secrets, too much into its intricate details. Rasulullah mentioned Mahdi is going to come. Nabi mentioned these things. This is what the Prophet mentioned. But Rasulullah did not go into specific detail. Why? Because if Rasulullah specified specific details, what would happen? What would happen? What would happen is people would begin to think, oh yeah, when Mahdi comes, then we start practicing Islam. Then we know the Jal will come. Then we know the sun will rise from the west to the east. Then we know that that individual, that individual 
uh, will think, yeah, no problem, we can chill out. We can do whatever we want to do. And that should not be the case for that reason. Rasulullah did not specify these things. The Prophet didn't tell us when the Day of Judgment was. How long can we believe that Allah Almighty granted Rasulullah knowledge of the unseen world? Rasulullah was granted this knowledge. So much that Nabi knows who is going to Jannah and who is going to Jahannam. And they said the names of all those in Jannah are in front of me. And all those in the fire of Jahannam are in front of me. All these names are in front of me. That I can tell you who is where and what is what. To the point that one man stood up and said, where is my father? And Rasulullah said, your father is in the fire of Jahannam. Another one stood up and said, Ya Rasulullah, where is my father? And Nabi said, your father is in the fire of Jahannam. Another one stood up and said, who is my father? And Nabi said, this is your father. One day Abbas came to the Prophet and when he was captured in the battle of Badr, and the Prophet said to Abbas, ransom, give money and you can buy your freedom. You can buy your freedom. And he said, oh my nephew, Ya Rasulullah, at that time he hadn't had Iman, he accepted Iman later. He said, I, I, I don't have no money. And Rasulullah said, Abbas, didn't you and uh, Ummul Fadal, your wife, didn't you bury X amount of gold in so-and-so place? You've got money there. I know you've got money there. And Sayyidina Abbas said, I swear by Allah, that nobody knew except me and my wife where we had that. This is a dalil that the Prophet ﷺ has knowledge. This is a sign. Continue. Abu Jahl comes to the Prophet ﷺ. Abu Jahl said, if you're a true Prophet of Allah, then tell me what is in my hand. And Rasulullah said, shall I tell you what's in your hand? Or do you want what's in your hand to tell you who I am? Shall I tell you what's in your hand? Or do you want what's in your hand to tell you who I am? He said, go on, both. Rasulullah said, in your hand there are six pebbles. He opened his hand and there were six pebbles. Then he threw them. As soon as he threw them, the pebbles began to say, La ilaha illallah. Muhammad Rasulullah, he is the messenger of Allah. He is the messenger of Allah. Allahu Akbar. Amazing. Rasulullah was bestowed with knowledge of the unseen from Allah Almighty. Allah Ta'ala granted them this knowledge. And yes, ultimately Allah Almighty knows. But Rasulullah if they were to tell us when the day of judgment will be, then what would people think? Yeah, one day before the final day, we'll chill till then. We'll make sure nobody worships and pray. This is the mentality people would have grown. This is why Rasulullah didn't inform us about these things. They kept them hidden. They kept this information, this knowledge hidden from people. This doesn't mean they didn't know. How can I tell you the description of this masjid if I don't know this masjid? I describe to you how the windows look. I tell you what the doors look like. I tell you what the carpet's color is. I tell you where the member should be. I tell you everything. And you think, yeah, how do you know so much about it? You must know when it is as well. You must know where it is. You must have seen it. Obviously, I must have seen it that I'm telling you. I must have been there. I must have been shown it. Everything. Rasulullah described everything that will happen to the day of judgment and then they don't know when it will be. Then they don't know when it will be. It doesn't make sense. Our, our iman, our belief is the Prophet ﷺ was given kul ilmul ghayb. They were given knowledge of the unseen from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this knowledge was bestowed to them. This is not the actual personal knowledge. Let me clarify this point. Nobody go away and inbox me on Facebook and said, you said the Prophet has full knowledge of the unseen. Give me your dalil, give me your proofs. Let me give you my proof. Let me make it clear. Rasulullah has knowledge of the unseen world. And this is knowledge that Allah bestowed to the Prophet Allah Ta'ala gave this. It is atai, not zati. Allah gave this knowledge. Just as Allah Almighty gave knowledge to different creations. Suleiman is marching with an army that is covering vast amount of land. Thousands are in his army. From three miles ahead, what does the ant hear? The ant hears Suleiman's army coming. And the ant says, Ya ayyuhan namlu. O ants, run into your houses quickly. Suleiman and his army are coming. They might destroy us, destroy us and we won't know. As soon as they said, she said this, the queen ant. فَتَبَسَّمَ ضَاهِكَمْ مِنْ قَوْلِهَا What did uh, Sayyidina Suleiman do? 
He began to smile. He began to laugh at what she was saying, what the queen was saying. Allahu Akbar. Amazing. We know Suleiman salam can hear from three miles. We know that. Because he's a Nabi of Allah. Allah has blessed him with supreme, this uh, superior hearing to everyone normal. He is a Nabi of Allah Almighty. Allah has granted him these miracles, granted him this ability. But this aunt can hear Suleiman salam. If an aunt can hear Suleiman salam, if an aunt knows from three miles away that Suleiman is coming, she hasn't seen that far, but her hearing is so good that Allah has bestowed it to an aunt that an aunt can hear. Then, Bilal Tashbih wa Tamseel, Allah Ta'ala gives to whom he wills, how much he wills. And he gave the most to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Rasulullah informed us about all the signs. Then they don't know when the day itself would be. Logic tells us that the Prophet ﷺ was bestowed, but they didn't tell us. Okay. When Imam Mahdi shall arrive, and Imam Mahdi shall rule the world with justice, he will assemble an army, and they will be in Damascus. They will be in Baytul Muqaddas in Jerusalem. You should visit Jerusalem once in a lifetime. You will never appreciate what I'm saying to you now about Imam Mahdi until you actually go to Jerusalem and visit that place. Baytul Muqaddas, one of the harams. Today we've deprived visiting there. Today we don't visit the Jerusalem. We'll go to Mecca Sharif, Medina Sharif, but we're scared to go to the blessed land of Palestine. Why? Why don't we book our tickets to go to Palestine? I went to Palestine twice in one year. If I could live there, I would live there. If I could marry there, I would marry there. You know why? You know what my intention would be? And I told my mother this as well. She laughed it off and she said, Pali, tu shadi karver baadi utha socha. She goes, first do it here, then think about that. I said, why? What is my intention? We know Imam Mahdi will come to that masjid, Masjid al-Aqsa. And they will lead the Ummah in prayer there. And when Sayyiduna Isa salam will come from the heavens, descend from there. At the eastern minaret in the Umayyad Masjid in Damascus, the current war zone that is happening in Syria, in Damascus. And then Sayyiduna Isa salam, where will they go? <coughs> they will go to Palestine. And they will find Mahdi will be leading the Ummah in prayer at the time of Fajr. And they will say to Isa salam, you leave the prayer. Your maqam is greater. And Isa salam will say, no, I shall pray behind you. And Nabi of Allah Almighty, who shall return as an Ummati, Isa salam will not return as a Nabi of Allah, but he will be respected as a Nabi of Allah. He shall return as an Ummati, for after the Prophet sallallahu sallam, there is no Prophet. There is no Prophet. And Isa salam, he wasn't killed, nor was he crucified on the cross. This is a deviant belief of the Christians. They deviated from the heart. Allah in the Quran talks about it. That we, he wasn't killed. They didn't kill him, nor did they crucify him. But Shubbiha, there was somebody who was replaced him. And Isa salam was lifted to the heavens at the age of 33. When he shall come back, he shall be the age of 33. When Isa salam shall come back, and be the age of 33 and he will descend at the eastern minaret which is in the damascus masjid, in the masjid in damascus masjid umayyad very famous masjid many ulama taught there many scholars are buried around there in that province in damascus when sayyidina isa salam will come when sayyidina isa salam will come to baytul muqaddas at that time sayyidina isa salam will read Salah behind Imam Mahdi. After finishing Salah, they will find the Jal. Imam Mahdi, Isa salam, and the Jal will all be in one period. Some say Isa salam will live for 40 years. And he will kill, he will break every cross. And he will slaughter and kill every swine. And he will say that I follow the way of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And Nabi alayhi salam said, that when Isa salam shall come, he will visit my grave. Let me stop here. People say, oh, you shouldn't visit the Prophet's grave. 
it is bid'ah to visit the grave. There's no hadith that says you can visit the grave. The Prophet sallallahu said, Nabi Isa salam will visit my grave. That itself is a dalil for me and you to visit the grave. For if it was wrong to visit, then Nabi salam wouldn't have told us that the Prophet Isa salam will visit them. And there is a space next to Rasulullah salam that is empty. And who will be buried there? Sayyidina Isa salam. And it will be an ummati who will lead the janazah of a Nabi of Allah Almighty. Great honor for the ummah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Musa alayhi salam would make dua, O oh Allah, let me be from the ummah of Nabi wa akhir zaman. Let me be a follower from the final Prophet that will come, the seal of Prophets. He would constantly make this dua. Prophets made dua, let me be in that ummah, let me be in that ummah. On the day of Qiyamah, Rasulullah alayhi salam will have the largest ummah. They will have the most people in their ummah. Even though the ummah of the Prophet are today, if you look at the state, we are ummatis. We claim to be. Prophets wanted and made dua to Allah Almighty. Let us be in the ummah. They made dua for this. And Allah has chosen you in this ummah. And you have no ihsas, no qadr. You do not appreciate or value that you are kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas. You are the best ummah Allah has sent to the people. Who, me and you? But we don't appreciate or value this. We prefer to follow footballers and cricketers and pop stars and musicians and movie stars. We prefer to dress like them, walk like them, talk like them. And previous prophets, they would make dua that, Oh Allah, let me be in the ummah of the Prophet And yet we don't appreciate and value that we are in his ummah. We need to open our eyes. Allah has chosen us to be in this ummah. We are very lucky. It is a great ni'mah of Allah upon us that we are from the followers and the nation of the Prophet Do not let it be a situation that on the day of Qiyamah we go to Rasulullah and they say, you're not my ummati. You didn't follow my way. You didn't follow my sunnah. You didn't follow who I was, my teachings. You prefer to follow the West. You prefer, prefer to follow footballers and pop stars. You prefer to follow the dunya. Don't let it come to this situation. Change now before it's too late. And remember, it's never too late. Don't think that it's now or never. You have time, but maybe time is not on your side. Maybe you might not live long enough to change. Therefore, now should be the time that we change. Now is the time that we should do Tawbah. Now we should make the most of this. We only live once in this dunya. YOLO, there's no concept of YOLO. You don't live once. You don't only live once. Nah. I see so many brothers and sisters on Twitter and Facebook. YOLO, YOLO, hashtag YOLO, hashtag YOLO. No. It's not YOLO, hashtag YOLO. It's YOLT. You only live twice. Once here, once in the Akhirah. Not once. You don't live once, you live twice. You forget, you live once here in this dunya and then you will have another life in the Akhirah. We are not Hindus that we believe in incarnation. We are not non-Muslims without or atheists that once you die and that's it, Kapish, you're gone. No, it doesn't work like that. We need to open our eyes, awaken ourselves to the reality. When Imam Mahdi will assemble his army and he will have the black flag from Khurasan, he will have the black flag and we will identify. And Rasulullah salam would call that Al-Iqab. The black flag was known as the Iqab. And Imam Mahdi will hold the black flag with his army. And he will assemble an army. And the army of Imam Mahdi when it will arrive. And Isa salam will arrive. Before the arrival of Isa salam, we arrive to the Jal. Who is the Jal? What is mention of the Jal in a hadith? What is mention of the Jal in the Quran? Why isn't the Jal mentioned in the Quran even though it is from one of our fundamental beliefs to believe in him? The ahadith related to Isa alayhi salam, Imam Mahdi and the Jal have reached the level of tawatur. They are mutawatir ahadith. They are ahadith mutawatirat. They are very, very, very sound narrations that it is impossible for us to deny their existence. So many Sahaba narrated them. 
and every generation after them narrated about Imam Mahdi, Isa alayhi salam, and the Jal, Khuruj the Jal, the arrival of the Jal. When the Jal shall arrive, when the Jal shall arrive, he, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, described as a very long hadith narrated by a companion by the name of Tamim al-Dari. Tamim Dari was a Christian. In a nutshell, I will narrate it to yourselves before yourselves. I don't have much time. Like I mentioned, it is difficult to talk about a subject like this in vast amount of detail when there's so much narrated about it. Time is truly of the essence on topics like this. When Tamim Dari, who was traveling with a few people, they arrived to an island and got shipwrecked. When they arrived on this island and got shipwrecked, and this island is towards the east, this island is towards the east. Today, there are individuals on YouTube and in other, through other means who are interpreting these things, interpreting the uh, Freemasonic system, the symbolism relating to the Jal, and have Described that the Jal, when he will travel, he will come for 40 days. One day will be like a year. Another day will be like a month. Another day will be like a week. And the rest of the days will be like normal days. And they have interpreted this as the current time that we are going in. Because Rasulullah said towards the end of time, there will be no barakah left in time. It's a sign of the day of judgment. The years will fly by like months, months will fly by like weeks, weeks will go by like days, and days will go by like hours. And true, today we are living in that time, it's only like yesterday I came to Chester Street Mosque. It's only like a year ago, it's nothing. But so quickly time is going, no barakah left in time. And putting these ahadiths together, they have made interpretations through their own uh, research. They have come to certain conclusions. Allah knows best. In the end, Allah knows best. And when the Prophet Sallallahu said that the Jal will ride upon a mule, we will have ears that will be so long. Some have said that is like an aeroplane. And the island that the Jal was talking about, or Rasulullah was talking about, that island is Great Britain. So these are all uh, conspiracies or these are all opinions. Whether they are truthful or wrong, Allah knows best. And one person's research can be wrong. But based on what Rasulullah have mentioned in the ahadith, Rasulullah and Tamim Dari went and were shipwrecked on this island, and this island is towards the east. When Rasulullah, this man Tamim Dari was a Christian, later accepted Islam. Radiallahu ta'ala an. Sayyidina Tamim Dari, when he went, they go, we were shipwrecked. At that time, when we were shipwrecked, we seen and standing before us we seen a hairy beast type animal and he had hair from the top of his head to his toes and we said who are you and he said i am the jasasa and jasasa means spy i am the spy and they were amazed to see this I mean, Dari said he was amazed. And he said, I will show you something even more amazing. And he took them to a monastery, a cave. When they arrived there, they found that the Jal was tied up like this. He was tied up and they began to speak to them. And the Jal began to ask about certain things. He began to ask about Nakhle Bisan. And he began to ask about the Bahirat al Tabariya. And he began to ask about the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi Wasallam. That has the final Prophet arrived? And they said, Yes, the final Prophet has arrived. And the Jal said, Whoever believes in him will be saved from me. When Tamim Dari was shown their way and came back to the Arabian Peninsula. 
When Sayyidina Tamim Dari arrived back there, he came to the Prophet Sallallahu and described the entire story, narrated everything. Rasulullah in a number of ahadith warned the Sahaba. Rasulullah said, every Prophet before me warned about the Jal, and I warn my Ummah about the Jal. He will be the biggest fitna that will come upon my Ummah. He is a liar. The Jal, the word Dajjal, Dajala, it means the one who excessively lies. What will he do? He will claim to be God. And what? He will say, believe in me, I am your Lord. Shall I bring your parents back to life? And people will, because the Iman will be so weak. He will, they'll say, yes, bring our parents back to life. And then he will have shaitans working for him. He will have devils working for him. And shaitan can imitate forms. So other than the form of the Prophet Sallallahu He cannot imitate the form of Rasulullah and Allah Almighty has no form. Shaitan will imitate the form of that man's parents, whoever he may be. And the Jal will say, Am I your Lord? And those parents, yani those shayateen, will say, Yes, you are. And they'll say, Look, your parents have said, and he will believe. Whoever believes in him will be destroyed. Nabi Salam said, The Jal will have two rivers with him. He will have one river of water, and he will have fire in his other hand. Not two rivers, he will have. A river and a fire in one river in the one that will be the river in reality will be fire and the fire will in reality be water and the one who cho chooses the fire will go into water and the one who chooses water will go into the fire he will be a mass illusionist magician he will try tricks on people he will try to trick people the iman he will stand and will have shayateen with him he will cover every single part of the land. This is what he said to Tamim Dari. He said, I will cover all of the land. Every part of the world I shall enter except two places. I will not be able to enter haram e Makkah and haram e Medina Munawwara. For on every gate, there will be seven gates. And on each gate, there will be two angels. And Nabi Alayhi Salaam said that the, an illness Plague and the Jal will never enter into Medina Munawwara. Allah has protected them. The city of Medina Munawwara and Makkah Mukarramah from the Jal. How lucky will those believers be in those Haramain who will be saved from the Jal? The Jal said, I will test everyone and he will only come for 40 days. When the Jal will come and arrive and he will begin to test, one man will stand in front of the Jal. And he will say, who is your Lord? And he will say, my Lord is Allah. And he will swipe him into half, kill him. He will be chopped into two halves. And then the angels will bring him back. And they will see, and he, they will, the Jal will perform an illusion. Individuals, Mufassireen, Muhaddithin, scholars have interpreted this. Who is that guy and man who will be tested by the Jal? It will be Sayyidina Khidr alayhi salam. Sayyidina Khadir or Khidr, who is a wali of Allah Almighty, it will be him. Allahu Akbar. And this is an interpretation. When Rasulullah described the Jal, Nabi said the Jal will have curly hair. He will have a long nose that will be crooked and bent. He will have long nails. The Jal will have two eyes. One eye will be closed and drooping like a grape. And the other eye will be open. And between his eyes, there will be written Kafa and Ra. And everybody will be able to read this. Especially those who have Iman. They will be able to read Kafa Ra, yani Kafir. Those who have Iman will know. See, this is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the Ummah. And this will be the biggest test on the Ummah. And the greatest army that shall ever be assembled will be the army of Mahdi who will fight the Jal. That army will fight who? The Jal. When and the Jal will have seventy thousand Jews of Asfahan waiting for him. No need for this. Seventy thousand Jews of Asfahan will be waiting for the Jal, and they will be wearing a certain piece of cloth around them, and they will have shoes which shall have hair on them, and. 
these individuals, the Jews that will be waiting, see, why will the Jews, Rasulullah said the Jews will wait for them. Because the Jews are waiting for the promised Messiah, the Messiah. See, Sayyidina Isa is known as Messiah, the son of Maryam, the Messiah, the chosen Messiah, the true Messiah. The Jal is the Antichrist. And we say Sayyidina Isa is Jesus Christ. And the Antichrist will be the Jal, the liar. And when Isa came, the Jews turned against him. Because they said, we was waiting for the chosen one. You are not, and they killed him. And they are still waiting for the arrival of the Jal. And the Ahadith proved this. They are waiting for the arrival of the Jal. The Jal, when he shall arrive, and his army will be waiting for him. They will assemble and a great war will occur. Great battle will occur between the Muslims and the Jews. When Sayyidina Isa salam will arrive in Baytul Muqaddas, the Jal will be in that area. And when the Jal will see Sayyidina Isa salam, he will begin to melt like salt melts. He will begin to melt seeing the Jal. Seeing Sayyidina Isa salam, the Jal will begin to melt. Melting here doesn't mean literally melting. Yani will become scared. He will fear Isa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam then will chase him until they arrive at a place called Bab el Lud. Bab Lud. Bab. You should know this and tell your children. These are things that will happen in the future. And we need to prepare our youth for them to know about these things. Maybe not in our time. Maybe in two, three hundred years time. But Allah protect our families, our children, our grandchildren, great-grandchildren who will come if Allah blesses us with them. Allah Ta'ala blesses us with those children. That their Iman is strong at that time. The Iman doesn't get weak at that time. When the Jal will come at Bab el Lud, which is near Tel Aviv Airport. I've actually visited this place. When you go to the blessed land of Palestine, you will visit the place of Lud. They'll show you. It is a well. The Jal will be killed on that point. That is the point where the Jal will be killed by Isa alayhi salam. And then Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam after killing the Jal. The Jal, his system, people are saying, is being applied. Wallahu alam, Allah knows best, but we see great symbolism. Whether it's on the dollar, the one eye, whether it's in movies, whether it's in uh, music videos. Whether it's to do with Katy Perry or Jay-Z, those who have sold themselves to Satan, the Freemasonic system, it exists. Those who sell themselves to Shaitan, Allah talks about them in the Quran as well. And there is no doubt that the Jal, his signs are appearing. And the day of Qiyamah is drawing very close. Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, when he will kill the Jal, then an Imam Mahdi, what will happen is the remainder of his army, they will go and hide behind a certain tree or stone. Right now in modern day Israel, Palestine, they are chopping that type of tree down. For it's that tree that will speak out against them. Now at this moment they are doing this. This tree that is there, and what will the tree say? Oh Muslim, or oh servant of Allah, there's a Jew behind me, kill him. There's a Jew behind me, kill him. And then they will go and they will begin to kill. And before you know it, the dunya will be rid of evil. Adal and insaf will be established. Sayyidina Isa salam will rule. And there will be so much justice and peace in the dunya. So much, so much. That a wolf will sit with a sheep and a sheep will not be scared of that wolf. So much peace will be in the dunya when Isa alayhi salam shall be. So much aman and sakoon in that time. And thereafter, other major signs of the day of judgment will appear. The sun shall rise from the west to the east. And not only that, signs such as Ya'juj and Ma'juj, which will appear in the time of Isa alayhi salam. And one day, inshallah, we will talk about the Ya'juj and Ma'juj. Who they are, the historical context. The Jal at this moment in time exists. The Jal is not something symbolic, it is actually a physical appearance. He shall come in a physical form. Rasulullah has described his physical form. 
Therefore, he shall come in a physical form. So when the Jal will arrive, he will test the people. Imam Mahdi, Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam, and the Mu'minun of that time will destroy his army. And this is why people talk and say, Imam Sahib, talk about the Jal. Talk about Imam Mahdi. Talk about Sayyidina Isa alayhi salam. I say, yeah. Great, it's fantastic. We should talk. We should make people aware. But remember one thing. You might never live till then. You should prepare for your death first. Your death is your first test. We might never live till then. It's good to have this knowledge and information. It's good to research and study about these things. But first and foremost, research and study about your grave. Know that your grave calls you out 70 times a day. Know that the grave says, I am the place of worms. I am the place of darkness. I am your home. I am the one where you shall return to. Worry about these things. So many youth go around, the jal, the jal, look at that. This and this and this. I say, good, okay, that's fine. I'm not knocking you back for it. But we need to get our priorities right. You might live your entire life with the jal, the jal, the jal, and you never, might never get to do his yara. <laughs> you might never get to even see him. So what's the point? This is good knowledge to have. It's good that ulama are talking about this. Because we are living in the end of times. Signs are appearing. Very, very quickly, rapidly, signs are around us. The final hour is approaching very near. The final hour is very close. And the moon has been split. And Allah Ta'ala talks about this in the Quran. We need to make ourselves uh, aware of those things which are immediately related to us at this moment in time. And this is why when people say, why do you talk about drugs and alcohol, which I've cut down on now? Why do you talk about bad boys and bad boy mentality and call of duty? And why do you do talk about these things? People say, we've heard you talk about it a hundred times. You are always talking. One, I don't want to talk about it. But I get called by people, therefore I talk about it. And I finish on this point. I'll clarify my motive and stance. That I talk about these things <coughs> because... <coughs> People invite me. They say, oh, Imam Sahib, talk about drugs and alcohol. So then, Chalo, we'll talk about drugs and alcohol. That is wrong. It's bad. We don't talk to encourage people. We talk to discourage people. The tarheeb, not targheeb. Targheeb means giving raghbat, encouragement. Tarheeb means to discourage. We discourage people from this thing. And we, I talk about these things. Because it's a topic, it's the issues of today's time they need to be touched on muslim youth are going more and more towards these things and they are becoming practical examples of the signs of the day of judgment so because of necessity i talk about these things if it was with me wallahi i would sit and talk about the sahaba all the time if it was with me i would talk about the great battles of islam if it was with me i would talk about the prophet وسلم, all day all night but it's a necessity to talk about these issues. So then why do we name them Call of Duty? Why do we name them? You want to be a bad boy. Why do we name it Gangster's Paradise? You shouldn't be naming it these things and you shouldn't be holding them in the mosque. People said that to me. They inbox me on Facebook and they go around talking to people saying, why do you do it? I have a simple answer. If I said, uh, those people in paradise, speech by Imam Asim, I don't think half of you would turn up. It's a, it's, a, it's a boring title. Jannat us Imam Asim going to talk about. I forget it. But when you say gangsters paradise, all the gangsters, all those who want to go paradise, they turn up. <laughs> and in today's day and age, we need to use wisdom. I took an approach where I named titles after these things because it's what's drawing youngsters in. Look, look around. Turn the camera around as well. They're all these youngsters who come because the titles are catchy. We, I can name this end of times and talk about Gyarmi Sharif. I can talk about Milad Sharif. You're here, you can't go nowhere now. I can do what I want to do. So to bring people in, and isn't that our aim to bring people towards the house of Allah? We want them youngsters, people, lads who probably come one, once a week on a Friday. Some guys probably don't even come at all. Today, Allah Ta'ala has guided them here. Possibly. Maybe all of you do come. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. This is our niyyah. To bring people towards the house of Allah. 
to build a connection with them, talk about relevant things. If we talk about the stories of the past and say, I'm Amsab, they were, they were great awliya of the past, talk about today's time. You know, I'm a bad boy, I'm a chiller, I listen to music, I, sleep, I, I do haram, I smoke, I drink. You know, talk to me on my level that I can relate to you. So that's why we talk on this level. So people say, oh, Imam Sahib, why don't you talk about all about the Quran and the Hadith, Quran and the Hadith? I say, yes, there is no greater speech than the Quran and the Hadith of the Prophet. Wow. There is it, Wallahi. No greater kalam than the kalam Allah. It's the best kalam. But why do I talk in the manner that I talk? Imagine I sit here and I quote Bukhari and Muslim, Bukhari and Muslim. I quote Tirmizi and I quote, this is uh, Sukhra and this is Kubra. This is the Natija and this is this Kaziya and that Kaziya. You're already lost what I'm saying. Let's be honest. You're going to think, why are you talking about these things? Imam Sab, I don't know, what, what's Mantik? What's Balagat? What's this Usul and that Usul? That kind of speech is for students of knowledge. Those of you who are studying Mantik and Falsafa, those of you who are studying Usul, Balagat, who are studying Tafsir, you will appreciate when I talk about Tafsir and Balagat and Mantik. Those of you young lads who have just come here for a hype speech, who want to boost, then me talking about this, I think I'm a boring speaker. He doesn't talk on a level, he doesn't relate to me. That's why I speak the way I speak. The aim is to speak to people on their level. nas ala qadri ukulihim. Speak to people according to their levels. Don't speak on cloud nine and everyone's just wandering around. Our aim is to inspire youngsters. My aim and my mission is to inspire, to reform, and to educate. That's my, my near and my mission. To inspire youngsters onto the deen, to reform them to become good people, and then to educate them to become true practicing Muslims. That is our near. that's my mission. That's been the mission of our Asatiza, that's the mission of the Ummah. To inspire people towards Islam. And we inspire them through our talks, our lectures, we inspire them Insha'Allah, with the will of Allah through our actions, we inspire them through encouraging them to become good people. This is why the approach that I take. And not only that, people say you don't talk about Aqeedah. You should talk about Aqeed related issues. Yes, we should. I agree 110%. But when, why shall we, if we talk about Aqeedah first, and the young lad sat there and says, look, I don't even read my namaz properly, Imam Sa. I don't even know how to read my namaz properly and you're telling me about my aqidah. Teach me how to read my namaz and these things. Yes, aqidah is fard. Knowing your aqidah is very important. And we need to teach the youngsters what is the true aqidah. I don't disagree with this whatsoever. But first you've got to bring the youngsters in to teach them. And right now we are bringing them in slowly. Don't worry one day, inshallah. Allah gives me the will and the power. We will talk about Aqeedah and you will see hundreds inshallah coming to our way. Oh. ta'ala. We are not hesitant or it's not that we can't do it. It's not that we can't do it. We'll do it. If you want me to do it right now, I'll do it. No problem. That's fine. But why? It's just we've got to use wisdom. Wisdom is important in, in the time like this. We need to use some hikmat amali to draw people in first and then teach them and educate them. So this is me clarifying to yourselves the approach, my way, my stance, the way I am, I wish to change. Wallahi, if, if the youth were all students of knowledge, I could talk about those things that everyone wants me to talk about. That people are saying, talk about the usul and balagat. I would. But we need to bring the youngsters in first. I make dua that Allah brings all the youth back in towards Islam in a strong manner. And that the iman is strong. And they are strengthened. And Allah gives me tawfiq to continue doing this work. Allah forgive me for any wrongs that I've done. And Allah Ta'ala give me tawfiq to continue to inspire people. Amen. Ultimately, all of this is from Allah. Wallahi, there's no kabiliyat of mine. I don't go around looking for anyone to praise me. I don't need nobody telling me bad boy speech, Imam Sad. Wallahi, I don't need that. I don't come here for that. I come here to say what I gotta say. I speak how I wanna speak and I intend to speak the truth and that's it. Whether a person likes it or not. We've, we've, my niyyah has always been that. I'm not looking for scores, points, nothing. There's nothing here that I want from anyone. There's nothing that you can give me. Everything is from Allah. Whatever I have, I have no knowledge. Compared to great ulama today, I have no knowledge. I am not even a pebble amongst these mountains. Wallahi. And I don't say this to humble myself. I really am not. 
but Allah Ta'ala has chosen me to do some work. This little work that I'm doing, make dua, Allah accepts this. Amen. Wallahi, my a'mal are not good. I am weak. We are weak. You are weak. But make dua to Allah that Allah strengthens us. Amen. I help you, you help me. We become strong Muslims, practicing Muslims. Our iman needs to be strong. Our, just as we physically train, we need to train our hearts, train our soul, draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <laughs> Allah Ta'ala forgive me if I've said anything wrong. All wrong is from me, all good is from Allah and His Habib. Sayyiduna wa Nabiyuna Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallama. The du'as of my mother and father and the nigah and the du'as of my asatiza, my teachers, uh, in particularly the great Shaykh Muhammad Imdadu Sayyid Pirzada Matazillahu al-Ali. Allah Ta'ala accept everything that we have said today. Allah guide us towards a straight path. And inshaAllah, just as we have gathered here today, O oh Allah, in the presence of Rasulullah sallam, gather us in Jannatul Firdaus like this as well. Wa qulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa akhru da'wana alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.